sneaking silently and stealthily up on the enemy. Nieves Fernandez is a woman who showed courage and bravery during the Second World War. Greetings. Today, we will talk about a woman named Nieves Fernandez, whose exploits are still known today. Is it true that she knew how to make shotguns from ordinary gas pipes, as well as homemade grenades from old nails? Why Fernandez didn't wear shoes while confronting her enemies? And what price was offered by the government of the Japanese Empire for the head of a brave woman who succeeded in fighting enemy soldiers? Be sure to read the material to the very end to learn all the details of this amazing story. From an ordinary teacher to the commanders of the partisan detachment. Let's first go back to the beginning and find out what happened in Nieves' life in 1941. It was then that Fernandez, a Filipina by nationality, was an ordinary school teacher. She taught in the city of Tacloban. Also, Nieves Fernandez owned several stores, but a terrible event happened in the country. In December, Japanese soldiers invaded the Philippines. The woman was well aware of what fate awaits ordinary residents in the captivity of the enemy. The Japanese at that time spared no one and used the most horrible tortures on the victims. But Filipino women could easily become an object of comfort for the soldiers of the enemy empire. Nieves Fernandez's greatest fear was for her students, and the Filipinas' wholesale business had fallen into the hands of enemy soldiers. To resist the troops of the Japanese army woman made an irrevocable decision. She led a guerrilla group of 110 people. Fernandez herself became a commander and later received the rank of captain. Knowledge and skills that came in handy in battle. Do you think an ordinary woman can show ingenuity and surprise the soldiers with her skills? Nieves. Fernandez proved that nothing is impossible. So what knowledge and skills did the former Filipino teacher possess? First, Nieves Fernandez taught the guerrillas combat skills. In addition, the men and women of the detachment learned the proper use of knives. Then, she taught how to make shotguns from the usual gas pipes, latongs or sticks, and even homemade grenades. The latter were filled with gunpowder and old nails were used as shrapnel. The former teacher demonstrated successful shooting skills. It was not without reason that the Japanese soldiers nicknamed her Tough Shooter. Secondly, the Filipina tried to remain inconspicuous and strike first. For this purpose, she didn't wear shoes and therefore went barefoot. This is how she could remain silent while approaching a Japanese soldier. Nieves Fernandez herself used the so-called bolo, a rather large and sharp knife. The main essence of the fighting technique was that the woman struck from behind and below the earlobe of the enemy. After that, the enemy would at least lose consciousness and fall to the ground. This was the skill that Fernandez possessed the most. By the way, the ability to handle such an object, the woman fully demonstrated to one of the American soldiers. Even preserved a photo where the commander of the guerrilla unit puts the blade to the neck of Private Andrew Lupi Bay. The demonstration of the combat skill took place on the Philippine island of Leyte in November 1944. As Nieves Fernandez and a squad of guerrillas confronted the Japanese Empire, they were able to capture valuable trophies of enemy soldiers. The Filipina often acted alone. Silently and unexpectedly, like a ninja, she struck one blow after another. Quite often, Fernandez wore a black dress to become invisible. The exploits of Nieves Fernandez and the guerrilla unit. So, the Filipino guerrilla group, led by Nieves Fernandez, showed real heroism for 2.5 years of confronting the enemy Japan. And this is despite the fact that the country of the rising sun came close to many Philippine islands. Even the U.S. Army, which was an ally for the Philippines, was defeated. The U.S. soldiers were also helped by the guerrilla forces. For example, provided intelligence to the U.S. paratroopers. Fernandez and the brave guerrillas are known to have put down up to 200 Japanese soldiers throughout the occupation. 
the enemy army in turn tried in every possible way to take the squad leader prisoner. But all attempts were doomed to failure. The maximum that the Japanese could do was to wound Neves Fernandez in the right arm in one of the battles. But even after such a wound, the woman did not lose heart and continued her main mission, a reward for the head of a belligerent teacher from the Philippines. As you've probably guessed by now, there was no shortage of rewards for whoever could capture the militant teacher. The Japanese government, concerned about the heavy losses of its army, offered a price of 10,000 pesos for the head of Nieves Fernandez. But that was not all. The Japanese faithfully believed that the woman would be surrendered by their own. This did not happen as the guerrillas and the inner circle highly valued their commander. And Nieves Fernandez was never captured by the Japanese, on the way to the cherished victory. In the course of the fierce struggle, the guerrilla group led by Nieves Fernandez accomplished several other important tasks. Through sabotage, the group halted enemy supplies and then raided numerous Japanese camps. Nieves Fernandez was directly involved in the liberation of female prisoners. The Japanese who remained in the Filipino villages were defeated every last one of them. For the first time in the Philippines, the island of Leyte, where these events unfolded, was freed from the influence of the Japanese Empire. And all this thanks to the joint actions of the guerrilla group and the American army. Nieves Fernandez went down in history as the first and only woman who commanded a detachment of 110 people in the Philippines during the World War II. Conclusion Thus, Nieves Fernandez is remembered as a brave woman and liberator of Philippine lands. Her heroism during the World War II years is forever enshrined in the pages of history. After that, Miss Fernandez, as her students affectionately called her schoolteacher, lived a long life.